This is Moton Field, located in Tuskegee, Alabama. During World War II, this important airport served as the primary training facility for the Tuskegee Airmen. Now it's commemorated by the National Park Service as the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site. Hi, welcome to another episode of Road Trip Story on roadtripstory.com. I'm Joseph Kaler, behind the camera is James Romeo, and we're here today to talk about not just an airport, not just pilots, but a group of African Americans who really tolerated and really achieved great success during World War II and thereby not just changing really armed forces in terms of desegregation, but really American life as we know it. So let's take a look today at this road trip story of Tuskegee Airmen. Before World War II, US Congress enacted the Civilian Pilot Training Act and because of this, that's really essentially how the Tuskegee Airmen came to be. And you really can't tell the story of the Tuskegee Airmen without the Tuskegee Institute, which is also a National Historic Site. In fact, the field here, Moton Field, was named after Robert Moton, who was the second president of the prestigious institute right after the passing of Booker T. Washington in 1915. Moton Field still is a functioning airport today. And what the National Park Service has done as refurbished Hangar 1 and unfortunately Hangar 2 was destroyed by fire in 1989, but they did a really good job of refurbishing it uh, and also saving the control tower. All these places you can visit today at the National Historic Site. We're here inside of the newly reconstructed Hangar 2 and right above me is a P-51, which is the preeminent fighter plane used by the Americans in World War II and also by the Tuskegee Airmen. It is a Tuskegee Airmen fighter plane because you can tell by the red tail, which is how they were distinguished during the war, particularly the 99th Fighter Squadron. And these guys escorted bombers and they were very brave, very heroic. And you'll really see their total combat record, whether it's just in numbers and information on the wall, or even here on this great European theater map of all the bombing runs that were committed by the Tuskegee Airmen. We're here on top of Hangar 2 at the control tower, which during Moton Field's heyday during World War II is really the uh, nexus, the really brains of the whole operation. And the National Park Service does a really good job of re, uh, preserving this so you can just really see a great vantage point of the airport. Behind me is a ghost structure. Now, why these are here is because the National Park Service has deemed this site an original site that unfortunately, since they can't really rebuild it due to inadequate information like old pictures or even schematics, they put up just basically a simple, just rudimentary form of what the structure was here, but it is located on its original site. This was undoubtedly the busiest spot of Moton Airport during World War II for the Tuskegee Airmen between Hangars 1 and Hangar 2. What you're seeing here is the administrative, the brains, if you will, of the operations of Moton Field. What you just saw is the Army Supervisor's Office. If you come here, you'll see the rest of the Army Office, where the beauty of this is that you'll see not only just really nice, fine recreations and I don't know, you'll see office antiques from like the mid 40s, but you'll also see really an important fact of how seeing that civilian administration as well as military administration just really came together. And you saw that with a lot of cases in World War II, especially at Moton Airfield. And that's really one of the places that made the Tuskegee Airmen and this place so successful. And right here, we're in the manager's office where, again, just a really good recreation. Um, I like just the old office spaces. Just that, for example, is just really good. But again, just seeing this, how that the airport really ran on a day-to-day -day basis is really unique. Located here in Hangar 1 is really an important facet of a cadet's training, which is just education in general, and where they receive a lot of books, periodicals, and military matters, such as this, just battleship recognition, especially on bomber runs, that was very important. You'll also get to see uh, another part of the military life here, which is the cadet waiting room, which is where during World War II, a lot of shaking, nervous cadets were waiting for their flight instructors to come in. and before they tasted their first really time in the air, it started right here in this very room. Before the pilots really graduated solo and into fighter planes, they trained in this, which is the PT-17 cadet. 
And one really interesting thing to note that the first instructor was Charles Anderson, who's the first African-American to fly solo across the Atlantic. So again, really great piece of history you can find out, not just with Tuskegee Airmen, but just with aviation in general. To maintain the aircraft here at Moton Field, you need this, which is where we are at currently, a supply room. Now, a number to remember is while there are 992 actual pilots that got through the course of the war here that were African-American at Moton Field, there are about 17,000 African-American men and women that actually did supply and really just give structure, whether they were electricians, they were carpenters, they were radar and maintenance workers, and a lot of it is really reflected here in this room. One of the great things about visiting a historic site is especially this one, other than the obvious fact that it's free, is you get to really try on a lot of these old fatigues and recreated uh, military gear. A lot of historic sites do that, so I think it's a great incentive to really just kind of experience history firsthand by wearing some of the clothes. Another really good benefit about visiting here at Tuskegee Airmen is that they do a good job of interpreting not just older technology like the phone, but what they've done is they've kind of really made a new synthesis of the old technology, but made it where you can actually listen to voices from actual Tuskegee Airmen when you come here by just simply dialing a button. What you see here is a recreation of a parachute folding table. And the job of the parachute rigger wasn't just packing in like you're packing in a little picnic. This actually was a multi-step and very continuous process, usually done by African-American women here at the airfield. And I actually had a chance last time I was here to actually do this. And let me tell you, uh, jumping out of a plane is one thing, but folding a parachute, just about as tough. The biggest imprint of the Tuskegee Airmen is the legacy that they left behind. And this right here is a suit worn by the first African-American woman in space. And I think it's a real true testament here at the National Historic Site that they've really not just shown, not during World War II, the impact that the Tuskegee Airmen did, but even afterwards, even today, through just different programs and certain events, even here at Moton Field during the year, such as the Tuskegee Fly-In, as well as just seeing videos or even, if you're very, very lucky, actually meeting a, a real Tuskegee Airmen veteran in an interview. Well, that about does it here for us at Moton Field and the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site. So we're gonna wrap it up. And if you guys are really interested in the Tuskegee Airmen story, I recommend you just doing a little research on your own by way of books, uh, different types of media like movies, and just a little internet research if you can. It's a great part of American history, shouldn't be overlooked. And if you're ever here in uh, middle Alabama, right off 85, is this historic site. So I highly recommend it. So for me, Joseph Kaler, and as well behind the camera, James Romeo, we bid you adieu on another episode of Road Trip Story. But I would like to say a special thank you to our subscribers, and I would like to welcome you guys to subscribe to our channel, and um, just make sure to visit us on roadtripstory.com. See you later. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be inside a gun turret, which is the biggest part of a battleship which most people think of, you can look no further than going inside of one.